Hi everybody and welcome to the Insomnia Running Club podcast. I am your host Mark Gallagher. Uh, apologies um, for a couple of weeks of uh, not being here uh, and not getting the podcast out there. Loads of different reasons. Um, time pressures, um, baby's not feeling well, um, just life getting in the road, that and just feeling uh, tired and, and, and exhausted. Training is in full swing, flat out, flat out training. So many other bits and pieces going on, loads and loads and loads of charity work for the Pips Charity in North Belfast. Um, currently undergoing getting a new website which is now up and running and I have to drop it runinsomnia.com um, just a community website um, running community or a triathlon or anybody that's really setting themselves a challenge uh, and looking to uh, share stories gain stories from us on, on anything we've done just a big community big platform for sharing really sharing everything and encouraging people uh, and giving them a bit of motivation and uh, spurring them along and just wishing people well. There's not enough of that, you know, people putting themselves out there and um, people going, yep, got your back, go for it. You know, if this is what you want, absolutely fire away, kid, you go for it. So yeah, we've got that, runinsomnia.com, myself and my friend Ivan, uh, who I run with, we are currently um, flat out with that again check us out on instagram and facebook runinsomnia.com um, we're doing some fun stuff on there sharing the the journey this ultra um these ultra race journeys and the training for it and, and all the goings on the ins and outs trying to in the most fun easy non-serious way trying to show how you go about doing an ultra um, it seems to be a, a dirty little secret or like very like kept under wraps um, or maybe it's just so early the sport that no one's come up with a way to, to run an ultra or they're just all sick people and they're just like find it out for yourself go and torture yourself get yourself in a load of pain and uh, hopefully you, you'll get there on the other side um, but we are loving it absolutely um, loving it so yeah on there it'll have our, our training schedule um it'll have you know what we're doing in the week how we're resting what we're eating um this week i went and bought um new shoes uh i have to say there is absolutely nothing that looks good about ultra running shoes they are the goofiest most weird looking big soled crazy looking shoe there's nothing you couldn't walk out of the house and go to the shop wearing them with a pair of jeans because you just look ridiculous but i have to say they they serve a purpose and all that cushioning and foam and um, it does make life a little bit easier but yes my week was consumed um by uh buying new shoes <clears throat> Things popped up into my head that um, I didn't even have, there wasn't even a consideration before. I found myself seriously debating, do I go for a shoe with five millimeters of drop compared to a shoe with zero millimeters of drop? Right up until this week, I couldn't have told you if any of the shoes I wore did have millimeters of drop. Um, so there you go, it's one of them things, you go down the rabbit hole and all of a sudden these insignificant things become important and all consuming uh, and you find yourself researching them online asking people for um their comments to which there's not an awful lot out there so yes that's part of the the run insomnia community as well that we will put it out there we will give you our naive but honest uh, opinion i think i put it out there this week that um we definitely have more passion than we do expertise. Uh, we are quite literally winging it, um, but loving it, loving it at the same turn of the coin. Um, like I say, part to do with the Run Insomnia um, 
community or a run insomnia journey, I suppose, that we're on is we are partnered up with the Pips charity in North Belfast this year. Um, I live in North Belfast, I've talked about this before, uh, and we have a massive rate of suicide. Um, bit of a, uh, not, not a nice topic to talk about, um, but it needs to be talked about. People's mental health needs to be talked about. The fact that people can um, share what's going on and talk to someone needs to be talked about it needs to be encouraged and again that's part of what we do with the running club you know we chat about everything the good the bad nobody's judged um you'll if you're needing career advice on here how do you go about um stepping up to do this or uh parenting advice or life advice on things getting you down anxiety not firing on all cylinders we will chat about it um and and through that i think pips charity in north belfast um it seemed the right fit um because i think that's one of the major problems is people don't talk especially men um, young men older men men in general they don't open up about feelings and emotions um and you've nothing to be scared about you, you'd be surprised the response you get back uh if you chat to someone about your emotions and what's going on and if you're struggling and people are only too happy to, to help and, and not be judgmental. Um, they just want to see you in a better place. So yes, Pips North Belfast, they're doing an incredible job. Um, they see people at their darkest moments. Um, they, they have a crew of 49 people. They receive zero government funding. Uh, and myself, uh, and my running partner and friend, Ivan, um, we decided that this was a, a perfect fit. So. We have the Just Given page um, that's currently on the website. So if you do feel like supporting the cause, please do um, donate something. It would be much appreciated. It would be highly appreciated. Uh, and it will go to a fantastic cause. And the guys there in the, in the PIPS headquarters in uh, North Belfast will put that money to good use. Um, yeah. So, yep, yeah, it, it, it's a fantastic charity. And we're, we're doing that. And we have a fundraising event couple of fundraising events um, coming apart with the races that we're doing and, and challenges um, with a quiz night as well uh, and again if anybody's out there I don't know if this is going to reach anybody that might be able to help but if you had uh, if you're a small business owner or a large business owner or you like this podcast and you want to help and you had something that you could donate to um, a raffle um, or a prize and um, please do get in touch um, running insomnia dot uh, or runinsomnia.com uh, and there's links to get in contact with us there um please please do um but this week this week was a big one <clears throat> uh it was a 60 mile week it's the biggest um miles we've had to do in a week and i'm glad to say and i'm proud to say we got every single last bit of it done and we got more done uh, as well and i'm over the moon about it because there's been storms in the past sort of weeks there's been hail rain snow um can the people in the med office please stop calling them names because before we just had wind and we just had rain now bobby alice sadie jorge kiva john bob they're all named these days uh, and it makes them far bigger um than what they are so Please take it easy on naming the, the storms. But yeah, the past wee while we have had a run of it. We couldn't get out for runs, couldn't do everything we wanted to do. It was just too dangerous um, to go out. So I was chuffed to bits of this week. Heel, rain or snow, we were going out. Um, but it, all the, 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 the weather fell in our um, favour. Um, so yeah, throughout the week, pretty much building up to today. Today is Sunday the 8th. Uh, of March um, we had done 30 miles previous in the week mixture of 5 mile runs, 8 mile runs, 7 mile runs um, mixture of everything um, but the shorter runs have got longer essentially um, full body um, circuits happening, kettlebells core exercises, plenty of stretching as well um, was going on this week but the big one 
was this morning. Uh, it's been on my mind all week. Uh, it would be the furthest distance that we have ran 30 miles. Um, we broke all, uh, away from the, the marathon distance uh, a couple of weeks or last week, uh, two weeks ago. We done 27 miles. Uh, it was only a bit over the marathon distance, but it broke that barrier. Uh, and this week um, we were to do 30 miles and had everything prepped. And uh, night before had my alarm set and to get up this morning a quarter to six to get out running for seven and the plan was to have breakfast in me have it digested and uh, have all my gear um you know sorted and, and ready to rock and roll that was the plan um but of course um i don't know i must have been exhausted i woke up i turned off the alarm whenever it went off and I went straight back to sleep in a daze and luckily enough my son god love him came in uh, to my wife's uh, dismay at half past six though I was uh, over the moon because that meant I just about had enough time to get up get my stuff on me get ready to go out and I just about made it while scoffing a banana and a chocolate brioche uh, into my face not even time for coffee and um, an electrolyte drink as well uh, getting bait into me going out the door so it was definitely not the best start to the longest run um, that I have ever done so up late there was no breakfast um, I actually put up a, a story on Instagram and the bags under my eyes uh, or something ridiculous they were uh they, they were they were pretty much hanging out of my head um so that was that was mistake number one we should almost name this podcast how not to run your first 30 mile run and um, so yeah up late um not the best preparation with fuel didn't give myself a chance to digest it me being the big child that i am this week i have bought new ultra shoes like i was talking about um i went for the hoka one one clifton six um shoes um for the cushion uh, i tried them out against a pair of ultra torrens uh plush uh four plush uh and these seemed the the right shoe uh for me to to go for um but today of course was going to be their first outing and me being over excited i thought sure what a great test 30 mile in a brand new pair of shoes and boy did i pay for it um at about mile 25 i felt like i had broken <laughs> my feet uh, i have had past uh problems with breaking my feet like i say years ago i done taekwondo uh, and yes i have broken each foot multiple times and it did feel like today that the pounding of the road it had uh, broken them um but i think maybe at the time feeling tired feeling exhausted that was maybe an over exaggeration in my head because now i'm walking i'm fine not swollen they're not swollen they're not black they're not discolored toenails have not fallen off uh, it's all in my head and you know what it's a great lesson because it just goes to show and um, that your mind will try to tell you stuff to make your pansy out and um, but my feet were fine they were just sore Boo -hoo -hoo. get over it you know that's the way i was almost thinking so yeah um new shoes for a 30 mile run when you haven't run 30 miles maybe not the best uh idea but listen we got it done myself uh, and ivan and another guy dave who run with he didn't now do the, the 30 mile today but he did go further than he's ever went before he'd done uh 15.6 miles and big well done to dave and uh, massive congratulations seven weeks until the marathon He's gonna smash it. He, he's no no problems at all. He he's getting there. Uh, he's he's in good shape for it. Um, but yes, we me and Ivan we we done thirty miles today. Um, and I have to say, like, it's incredible. It's incredible how much your body gets used to the miles. So it just felt like it was just teetering along, just you know, in emotion. Uh, almost went into a trance or maybe even delirious because. 
obviously I was moving forward, but it almost seemed like a, my feet were like going backwards. It was a strange, strange, strange thing. Um, but like I say, it was just on autopilot. So from mile one to mile 22, autopilot, easy peasy. There was no discomfort. There was no stress. Heart rate was in and around the uh, 130. Um, <clears throat> towards the late 20s, it then started creeping up into the 140, 150 <clears throat> bracket. But again, that's something I have to work on. Um, but yes, then I, I think normally the, the threshold, they say, for marathon running is mile 17, 18, when your glycogen levels break down and your body starts to have an unpleasant time and you're, you don't quite have the fuel in your muscles to, to get going. I think my tolerance um, has now built up to about mile 22 because um, a couple of weeks that's whenever I felt my most rotten. Um, not through lack of eating. Um, I'll, I'll talk more about my, my fuel of choice for the day but there was great logic to it as well. Um, but I think it was just... Um, that, that was that, you know, mile 22 is the, my new mile 17, 18 um, that, that the marathon distance runners will, will contend with. So, um, yeah, it was just, it, it got nasty at that point. My feet then, um, obviously not used to the shoes, were starting to rebel a bit, but not to the point where I couldn't go on. There was a couple of occasions where we did have to walk. I uh, initially said in my head, that's it, I'm walking a mile end up walking 0.2 of a mile and going right suck it up you know you're you're just having a wee pity party at the minute so then we started running again and then into a rhythm and then good uh again um but then uh definitely 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 mile 27 um that was tough i don't know what was going on uh maybe it was just the uncharted territory of never being past 27 miles um, but I have to tell you, whenever you've run 27 miles and you only have three to go, your mind, that, that them three miles, you know, any other time in your head, you'd be going, no, 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 three miles, we're, we're getting there, it's no problem. But you do start to doubt yourself once you've set a, a, a standard. Um, I was never, never, never not going to do it. I was always going to do it. And the, and the thought of quitting never did pass my mind. Um, but definitely... I definitely felt sorry for myself a couple of occasions um, and then I really, really, really had to um, have a word with myself and do some self-talk and some breathing techniques. I was, uh, mile 27, I was then starting to do big inhale, deep exhale, um, to try slow everything down in my head, to try gather my thoughts and then again, there was a mental checklist, you know, starting from the top down, I have to say, and I'm not boasting or, or, or being big headed, but from my head to my waist, I, I felt brand new. It was not causing me any discomfort. I had a pack on, the pack was fine. It wasn't causing me any discomfort. My arms were fine. Um, I had plenty of, of uh, flexibility and range of motion. You know, I wasn't feeling tight and... and, and tensed up I was feeling all good um though from the waist down it was definitely feeling tight can't not say you know being truthful myself my glutes were um uh, my arse was sore my hamstrings were sore quads were okay calves were starting to niggle but my feet were the, the big uh the big concern um but then it wasn't to the point where it was painful it was just uncomfortable um, so then once I had a chat with myself and I'd done my mental checklist, I was like, no, well, this is fine. This is grand. You know, we, there, there's no problem here. Of course, we're going to keep going. Um, so that's a massive tool. I, I, I use it anytime whenever I'm starting to, to get stressed or worked up about something uh, and my mind's starting to, 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 to go into, uh, I don't know, breakdown mode. Um, it's definitely a very, very useful tool. Just start from the top down, from your head, go through every major body part on the way down, and you'll soon find that you're really not in any uh, grave danger. You're not injured. You're not um, on the verge of collapse. You're just uncomfortable. You know, you're in the zone where um, 
your 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 body's just not used to it and that's all it was so uh, it definitely definitely helped the other thing that helped was conversation um massively so community and running is mega um like i said there was the three of us out today and right up until mile 20 it was like there was nothing you know it didn't cause any concerns chat was going football family talking about painting that you name it we there was chat about everything about eating out and in, in town one of the guys went to a nice restaurant and uh, he was talking about his meal um, and it was just yeah just lads having a chat that was just 100 percent. but that sense of community that camaraderie or that chat it is fantastic and it makes the miles go by so so easy on the other hand whenever you are having a bit of a debbie downer uh you can um you can you can really build someone up um whether it be through a quick comment whether it be through a bit of encouragement whether it be through just asking someone well you're all right mate um you can get a response from it and you can build someone up from it um and definitely it it worked massively for myself today both dave and ivan um giving me a bit of encouragement so uh yeah it it, it went uh it was a great great run and you know what at the end of the 30 mile um it was just it was amazing it was like there's another threshold there's another milestone ticked um and that's it it's done uh we can definitely do it i knew it could do it um so yeah it, it was fantastic um in hindsight there were so many things that could have made life easier one maybe wearing my normal shoes for the next wee while and breaking the others and other ones in gently second being get up whenever i should have got up and had my breakfast digested and had all that fuel in there for the mile 22 bunk uh of whenever um I, I was starting to feel tired and sorry for myself um and yeah just um yeah, that, that's, that, that was it. Maybe as well, my fuel of choice. Th this is my thinking. So, like I say, we definitely have more passion at Run Insomnia than we do have expertise. But I could not care less because this is my thinking on this. I've been buying energy gels and I've been buying Cliff Bars and Goo and all these branded endurance sport um, nutrition things, right? And me being totally, totally honest with you, I have yet to come across one that is actually tasty. Really, there is nothing tasty about any of them. So, this is my thinking. Why on earth would I, in a very uncomfortable situation where my body is screaming at me for fuel, it's also screaming at me because I'm running more miles than it's comfortable with, why would I then try to eat something that tastes rotten and the energy that it gives me is probably going to be the same as eating a mars bar or a snickers so my fuel of choice today was bananas and snickers and i have to say it done all right um i would say all in all the nutrition for the whole thing wasn't maybe tip top but it did give me a boost them two snickers and that banana um and there was one energy gel uh, as well but i think the things are disgusting they are they're just over sweet disgusting um if anything you're putting yourself more in danger of getting into a bush and having to have a poop uh, on a long on a long mileage run and uh, by taking on them things so i'm trying to stay clear of them and i'm trying to eat more well a snickers isn't exactly great but i just think it's better uh than that so yeah call me what you will for eating snickers um all the 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 proper sports science endurance heads um but then you might just have the hardcore uh knuckle draggers as uh david goggin saying yeah yeah man eat that snickers get it into your kit um but i couldn't care less eat the snickers get the miles done it's all good so yes as you can tell i'm all biz uh, I'm well chuffed that I got the miles done. Again, another big, big week next week. Um, same mileage, um, but we're going to drop the Monday run, uh, which is normally a five-mile run, and we're going to lump that on to next week's Sunday run. So 35 miles to do next week. Um, yeah, bit of better preparation will go into it. 
Um, there's a lot of ice baths to be had this week and uh, yeah, definitely to, to, to take a bit more care of water meeting and hydration this week. But all in all, I'm chuffed the bits that I got it done. Uh, I'm really, really glad um, to get it done. Um, a big, big week as well with organizing stuff for Pips and with the website. And please, please, please do. Uh, it's my podcast, so I can drop it all that I want. But please visit us. Please get involved with runinsomnia.com. Um, we're putting it out there. This is a good thing. This is, like I say, we are more passionate about it than we know anything about it. But I think that's a good thing. People, it can be a very stuffy thing in endurance sports and uh, very elitist. And we're trying to break that, if I'm being honest with you. And it's for everyday people, people who want to give it a go and are on the fence and are maybe being told uh, by some sort of snobbery not to do something. But just do it. Do it. Give it a go. Figure it out for yourself. Uh, it's an amazing experience. It's an amazing journey. Uh, and give it a go. So listen, it's been an absolute pleasure chatting to you again. I can't wait to chat to you next week, give you the rundown on everything that we're doing again and keeping you in the loop. Please, please, please get in touch with us on runinsomnia.com, uh, uh, runinsomnia on Instagram, runinsomnia on uh, Facebook, uh, and Insomnia Running Club um, podcast on YouTube. It's been an absolute pleasure. Uh, hope you get after it this week, get everything you need to do done uh, and enjoy yourselves out there. Thanks for listening again, guys. All the best. Bye.